Welcome to the Business Legends Podcast, where we interview business leaders and entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their success, become inspired, so be but people to make change happen. I'm the host of the show, Reese Allen, and today I'm accompanied by Laszlo B, but B stands for Balassi. And did I get it right? I got it right? <laughs> Absolutely right. I've been right. practicing this for five minutes, and those of us that, are, that, <laughs> that know that is kind of silly. Laszlo here is with Active Graph, a That's company right. that he started. How long ago now has it been? Uh, eight years ago. Eight years. Okay. Yeah. All right. So for our listeners, let's jump right in. And and, uh, and I want to talk about the Laszlo thing, too, because you got me super <laughs> okay. interested in that off air. Right. But um, so Active Graph, tell our listeners what that is and how you got into the industry. Yeah. So at Active Graph, we help decision makers make uh, decisions right within their their meetings and uh, by doing any what if. Okay. Basically. So we help them get any answer to any what if that think of by clicking and dragging graphs and okay. presentations and dashboards. And essentially what it is is that think about a graph being an output as it usually is in a dashboard. Yeah. Active graphs can also reverse the process where they talk to the calculations mm-hmm. and recalculate everything and bring the answers immediately. In real time. In, in real, real time. time That's so cool. Yeah. And I, I imagine that I can just imagine being in like a in like a boardroom and people are like, Well, what if? And then and then you're like, if this, we can do that, you know? And, Correct. And then That's we can right. we can make decisions in real time based on that. So you are you are an efficiency saver in that in that realm. You know? That's our thing. Time. That's, Saving that's, time and decision making. That's that's basically it. That's perfect. That's perfect. So how how did you come up with this idea for this company? Like where did it come from? Oh yeah, from? that's the thing is so the stuff that I did was in banking. Okay. And um, makes sense. And uh, in that world, uh, so most of the stuff that I did was structured loans and, and, and leveraged buyouts was okay. what most uh, you know, 17 years at Citigroup and managing director, you do a lot of different stuff. But yeah, basically, it was structured deals. Okay. Um, and I was always perplexed that we have more power in our cell phones than what took us to the moon. But we can't do real-time scenario analysis with clients. We'd go into yeah. meetings, and everybody knew that if you're going into a meeting with Laszlo, you have to have the first pages our understanding of your strategic objectives, right? You're talking yeah. to a client and say, what are your assumptions? What yeah. are your objectives? And that's a great way to start a meeting, but nine times out of 10, people would say, I'm glad you thought this through. Yeah. That's good. Derails. It's about our assumptions. But actually, we think that oil's going to do this and not that. And Derails. then you're like, Derails. What happens now? Yeah, yeah. What happens the now? Because so. the rest of the pitch deck. So, what do people do nowadays? They barrel ahead on their pitch deck because they don't want that to happen. Yeah. They just want to keep going and, right? It's a unidirectional thing. And so, that's what made me think of it. It's like two basic concepts is when you ask what if, and it's about a calculation or a data point. Yeah. Uh, it'd be easier to just kind of control those do with it the on graph the, do it on the and fly. do it on the fly. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that, um, you know, and are you, do you feel like your software is primarily used for uh, for meetings and things like that? Or do you think it's it's used like as a, um, I don't know, as like a, um, a analysis feature, like um, the scenes, so to speak? Like are people making decisions yeah. based on this? So those are the like two a, big uses. Okay. Um, the more immediate uses are with client interactions to okay. be smarter in front of clients sure. in some way, whether you're in technical sales or you're a fractional CFO and you're presenting your monthly review of the numbers or whatever. Yeah. That kind of interaction is tends to be high value because it can lead to revenue. Right? Makes, you, makes you look smart, too, because yeah. it's, like, it's like, well, we're just going to... Instead of this being like, a, I'm going to hammer you over the head like you were talking about, unidirectional meeting and saying, and saying we're going to do this, 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 and this. And all the while, the first thing that, that they said is like, oil is going to do this. And, yeah. and then the client's assumption is, no, we don't think it's going to do that. And then it's just it's <laughs> just chaos. Um, yeah. Investment group. I, this is super random, but mm-hmm. um, I actually had a lunch last week. It was with uh, Harvard Investment Group, and they brought in a gentleman that um, his company, um, it's something, something, something silver. I'll look it up. But anyways... Mm-hmm. Um, he his company is into uh, there's all there's all these facets of mining right because mm-hmm. they have to prospect the location and then when they prospect the location then they have to get the infrastructure in place then they have to get all the drills and equipment and then they have to do the high, and, yeah, and there's yeah, all yeah. these these pieces of the puzzle and whatnot and the other thing that's interesting about it is that typically, is it the Australian dude? Um, uh, um, he wasn't Australian. No, no? He was, okay. yeah, right, yeah. No, I've, you know, I've gone to a Harvard thing. Yeah. yeah, he's like you know. And it, but it's interesting because mm-hmm. commodities are interesting mm-hmm. in general. But um, when he was talking about the minerals, he's like, you know, if you're if you're digging for silver, you're also digging for copper at the same time. So mm-hmm. it's like it's like you right. have to take in these multifaceted things. So I could see something like Active Graph, right? Absolutely. And, and you say like you take a variable because it's it's obviously not just like A plus B equals C. Sometimes it's in any business transactions a plus b times x minus four plus three and seven times exactly whatever the exponential of blah 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 right, you're you're yeah. getting it you're getting it right away that's yeah. exactly it. yeah so 
It's uh, much more um, useful if you can touch, click, and change things and see the impact right away because yeah. a lot of relationships are not linear. Yeah. So if I add one more, it'll be one more at the end. Right. right? Business dynamics are many times nonlinear and many times conditional upon different different um, uh, environments. Yeah. And so in that, to be able to make a good decision, to be able to dynamically, very quickly recalculate things, just gives you a better feel for the sensitivities of what you're dealing with. Right. That's basically it. And the other thing that's cool is, up until now, especially with, we, we, we now also not only layer onto Excel, but we also layer onto Python, which mm -hmm. opens up a whole new universe for us. We just did a very interesting one for a, a very famous and fast growing uh, fast food restaurant chain that I can't name, uh, Microbial. Tell me after. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, really cool that they can take the uh, microbial load mm -hmm. model that our customer is really the data science shop that built the model for this. Mm -hmm. And they were able to animate the model right away. In other words, if this lettuce stays here for two hours longer, what happens to the microbial load? Right? Those wow. are things that you would never. And if you did that I try statically, not to think about those, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, are, is somebody going to get sick or uh -huh. not? Right? And, mm -hmm. and it allows the scientists at this restaurant uh, chain to to just change with the various assumptions depending on who provided the lettuce as a supplier, which mm -hmm. store it went to, and what kind of storage facilities they have at the store and so on. All of that executive who has to, now wow. those are not, those are, if you can play with that as an executive who has to decide about it, or the scientist that has to decide about it, it's much more fluid than to go to the uh, data scientists and tap them on the shoulder and go, hey, 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 run this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or run that one. Sure. You can do 50 times as many iterations or more. Yeah. Just sitting there Almost with your instantly. iPad and Active Graph just, just going through it. Yeah. That, that's what those people are doing right now as we speak. <laughs> yeah. The, the lead scientists of that the restaurant are using Active Graph now to, to kind of look at various scenarios. So that's, that's awesome. the kind of cool, cool stuff that opens up. Yeah. yeah, it's there's so many like implications for it and things that things that you wouldn't even think that that there's a there's a use case for type mm -hmm. of thing. You know, idea. I remember when I was when I was speaking with you on the phone um, originally, um, my first idea of it was was like a mortgage payment type of mm -hmm. thing. You know, and I mean that's very simplistic kind of, but you know it's like it's like if you pay this much because multi variables, right? Mm -hmm. If if you put down this much and you you know your interest amount your interest percentages this much or whatever yeah. here's the sliding graph and then i'm sure that you can also have a have another output which is to say like you know this is this is the amount of household income that you need to make to make it to make it viable or whatever like right. and so budgeting for those types of tools and stuff so absolutely so yeah. every calculation from the simple to the complex yeah it not you know active graph isn't good for everything but and you ask what for is when you need to make a decision and there's a calculation involved, even a simple one, mm -hmm. and you ask what if. Yeah. That's basically, the, that's the universe we play in, Sure. and that's where we're highly valuable. Yeah. If you're just reporting things from the past, why use Active Graph? You, yeah. you don't need an Active Graph for that. Yeah. You need a, just you know, one of the traditional things too. like Tableau or Power BI or whatever. Sure. When you need to recalculate something live, that's when there's not really anything else that does what we do. Yeah. And that's the, that's the cool thing. Yeah. So that's where we are, and let me put this on mute, because right, apparently... All good. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't do that. Somebody, but somebody loves you. That's okay. Somebody loves. You. Somebody loves. You. Okay, yeah. so let's let's jump into Laszlo. What? So you, before oh, yeah. the show, and for our listeners, just so that they're not confused, uh, before the show, you told your name, but had a very had a very uh, special implication of of name or something other than it just being your name. But um, there well, was some kind of interesting craziness. backstory. Yeah. As I was okay. growing up as a skinny little kid, can't tell now, but skinny little kid <laughs> in Cleveland, ago. Ohio. Um, it was really a burden to be called Laszlo, okay, uh, as well as have buck teeth and other things. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, so, as one of seven children, it was often back then. And this yeah. is a long, long time ago in the seventies and eighties, right? So people would uh, obviously make fun of it. Nobody heard of a guy named Laszlo before, sure. Right? And I was like, and that was kind of a tough thing, you know, the bullying thing. But mm -hmm. yeah, who, mm -hmm. everybody goes through it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. But then in high school. People were like, <laughs> unique name. So with the with the girls, yeah, it was a good thing. And in college, you're like Laszlo. Ooh, no, that's that, it. <laughs> that name? That, now, so I, I went to how the tables have turned. I'll take a little bit of bullying <laughs> for the outcome. No, but now know? wait, wait for the okay. wait for the punchline. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Laszlo, and I'm yep. a unique name, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and then I go over to Hungary, which okay. is in uh, 1990, 1992. I moved there. 
finally. Uh, but uh, I go over to Hungary, and you know, if you stood on a street and you took a stone and you threw it, you'd hit a Laszlo. Oh, really? I mean, it's like, yeah. There's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Gotcha. Everywhere is Laszlo. So I went the full circle. Yeah. Bullied. Cool. Like, cool. Back down to just common just joke. Common. That's pretty funny. That's and now you're back here. So yeah, you're, now I'm back in the stage. You're my first you... Laszlo. So that's that's, <laughs> okay. that's that's pretty funny. That's it's funny how things like that work out. My um, so Reese is actually my mother's maiden name, and okay. so um, but it's it's funny because when people see my name or or whatever, I think they just automatically assume that because of uh, Reese Witherspoon that I'm a that I'm a female. You know. Okay. And so yeah, because I'll be like, also people associate. Right. And so I'll be like, this is Reese, and like. Uh, I'm like, no, 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 it's a dude's name. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, this is Reese. Yeah, this is, this is Reese. Oh, you're a pretty uh, rough and gruff uh, girl there. I was like, yeah, well, I am. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so let's get back to Active Graph a little yeah. bit. So eight, so eight years ago, what, what made you um, decide? Because you're in the banking industry, you're yeah. with Citigroup. Did you see a, uh, what made you decide to, to take this plunge and, and make this software? Did you see a, did you see a need for it or you just thought it was something you could do? Or? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What? So, um, again? uh, the last thing I did as a banker was restructure a bank. I was on the board and I was in charge of treasury, capital markets, corporate, and commercial banking and a few other things. And that was where I had a little bit of latitude where I could do more to test various things. And it was in that where I, I had some developers just say, hey, there's this whiteboarding software. Just make it so that when I change the graph, that goes back to Excel. So it was like okay. a very, it wasn't even an MVP of Active Graph. It was like yeah. a prehistoric kind of like just a test of stuff. concept. My treasury proof of concept more than even an MVP. And um, when I made my treasury salespeople that were selling hedging products use it, mm -hmm. it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. Like Because they could go to a client and say, hey, this is what we recommend for your hedging, the volatility so of your cash flows. Yeah, This is the way you do it and dial in any market circumstance and we can show you that our volatility management is better than what you're doing now. And we wow. got a bunch of business from it, right? Yeah. And so that was like, okay, that's something, yeah. that's something. And then um, uh, we sold that bank. So I was hired to restructure the bank and sell it. And gotcha. so we ended up selling the bank and, and all that. And we had decided to move back 12 years old in Europe. Okay. And uh, we had decided to move back to the States before our oldest son was 12 years old, because that's kind of like a magic mark where if you, come to a country after being 12 years old, even if you're really American, mm -hmm. you don't assimilate the same way after sure. the age of 12 or so. And so anyway, he was only 10 and we're like, okay, this is a good break. Got my success fee, sold the bank, now we come. And it was with that memory of that experience of having implemented that proof of concept, I mm -hmm. think there's something to this, we've yeah. got to do that. And you know, there's so many things throughout the years and a lot of people have this like, I thought of that five years ago and yeah. it didn't, you know, and I yeah. didn't do it. And I'm, like, and I'm like, I didn't want to be that guy. I have guy. a funny story about that, by the way. Okay, I'd yeah. love to hear it. Yeah. It's going to be that guy. I'm, like, I'm yeah. like, I'd rather try it and then have to slump back and get a banking job yeah. than to not have tried it and go like, oh, there, somebody did it. Right. You know, that kind of thing. And that, that was basically it. Really. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And did you, did you have the... Um, I don't know the nice way of asking this. There's no the way to ask this, but did you did you have the technical proficiency to uh, be able to uh, program the software and things, or did you have to find partners and developers and things like this, or how did that work exactly? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no. Although I have to say that I was one of those geek guys that at the age of twelve bought a Commodore computer and you know yeah, first it was a twenty stuff. then a sixty four and yeah. Now I'm really aging myself, but <laughs> at least I know. So what I about. learned how to code. But okay. Yeah. And sure. do that. But I, at the point that I started Active Graph, I hadn't coded in like 20 plus years. So okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you're able to find some developers and, and yeah, put it all together. Yeah, absolutely. That was a key part of it. So yeah. finding the people that can make it a reality. And uh, I'm very, very involved in the product development process, but I'm also very decidedly not involved in how. How like I leave, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. You have Smart. to trust the people. Now, my co founding partner, Jod, is. A brilliant guy has mm -hmm. had several exits and has technical chops, and he's just really plugged in mm -hmm. to, uh, especially in Central Europe, the development community. Yeah. So we get best in class developers That's to help us. All that he he takes all the BS involved and the expense involved mm. in trying to find them and seeing if there's a fit and all that. He he takes care of all that stuff. So yeah. I'm, I'm really blessed to have a partner like him. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. It's um, I I just love seeing what what, especially entrepreneurs. You know, I feel like. Um, as entrepreneurs, we find 
we find the ways to make it work. We find the ways to make it happen, you know? And it's like, it, it's like there's so many things that, that we're involved in that I have absolutely no technical proficiency in. But it's like, take marketing, for instance. You know, marketing concepts typically remain the same industry over industry, you know? Yeah. The, the concept of, of creating an audience and a profile and a creative direction and ads and things like that are, are all pretty uniform no matter what your, what your uh, industry mm-hmm. is. Speaking of that, you know, we're able to, to plug into all these different spaces and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so speaking of that, um, you know, so when Active Graph was first created, your original usage, I think, was probably for, for live bank calculations effectively, or like what it was, was that? It um, was consulting firms and a, a bank. So sure. Active Graph went through a very interesting cycle. So although it was eight years ago, we're really relaunching with Active Graph 4.0 right now because wow. we, pr- we became a consulting firm with our software in yeah. the meantime. Yeah. So what we did was we launched Active Graph first with almost like an MVP version. Right mm-hmm. away, two very large global consulting firms signed up. That sounds like a great thing. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. How, wh- how come? Because that happens when you're a tiny company with a startup with one product and it's your MVP, mm-hmm. is that the large company, the large consulting firm, basically treats you like a small, (laughs) tiny company, which is fair, but specifically, the IT departments in those large consulting firms are not very good, frankly. Interesting. The quality of their service in in serving onboarding new software is very low. In fact, they are disincentivized from doing so because it's just one more thing they need to support. Yeah, right? yeah. So in a day and age where that's, everything that's really is like crummy. a that's a good point though. Like it, like they don't, they don't. That's a very interesting point you just brought up because it's like, it's like they, it's almost like they don't, they don't want to integrate your software. It's like, oh shit, I gotta handle another thing. You know, right? Like, the like front office to, wants it because it's cool, it's new, it makes them smarter in front of the client, and everything right. like that. But even the front office nowadays in large consulting firms are subservient to the IT departments. Wow, it's very strange. That it's is strange. very, very well, strange. it makes sense though. I mean, and it's not ubiquitous. Not not everywhere. Of course, but. We sure just had the experience with the people where, you know, the tail was wagging the dog, gotcha. essentially. Yeah. And we spent over $100,000 trying to make it good for environments that they would just change willy-nilly. Yeah. And, oh, we don't use that, you know. Yeah. And so um, that actually ground our firms. At that point, somebody had told me that, um, you know, just go with smaller firms and small and medium-sized firms because they'll grow with you. Mm-hmm. And as you become bigger, then go you know, go to the larger firms. And that's essentially what Salesforce did, right? Salesforce was a mom and pop CRM and then grew up. And I just thought, no, 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 I'm already in with these two big consulting firms. I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, ordering my yacht and my jet tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) right, right. Right? Um, And what instead happened, instead of landing and expanding, we landed and IT just was not capable or either was not capable or just didn't, was not, really uh, bought in to the whole process. It was that. Yeah, I can and, see that. And um, anyway, to cut a medium long story short, it was that um, then we said, okay, we, we took on some equity. It was angels and a uh, private equity firm. Uh, not a private equity firm. It was a venture fund, a development fund, a venture fund uh, in Europe. And that was 2020, January. Okay. And so... We developed the next generation of the product based on the learnings from the the major consulting firms, which was good. Um, But then when we were going back to market with the second version, you know, nobody was buying software. Sure. Unless if it was like, uh, you know, QuickBooks. Screen share. Screen share software. Zoom. Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Yeah. Stuff like that. Right. Right. Remote. um, We have software, but not this, not not, uh, scenario management software. And so Mm -hmm. um, we quickly became a consulting firm where we Mm -hmm. used Active Graph to help people make decisions. And our consulting is not, hey, what's your data and let's see what we can crank from your data. Mm-hmm. It's to say, hey, what decision do you need to make? Let's see what data and calculations you already have. And we'll build the best possible model that increases your probability of success in making good decisions, right? So kind of most consulting firms start with whatever data is available and then they try to run a cookie cutter machine learning model or something and then that kind of thing. And so because we're all about decision making and we're all about the future and stuff is somebody else uh, that has visualizations, all the other visualization stuff is really about the past doing descriptive mm-hmm. analytics. We're about future analytics. So 
we just make it really easy. And that was the consulting stuff was using ActiveGraph to do the consulting. Mm -hmm. um, and that worked out well because that generated enough money to bootstrap into what we are now going to market with, which is ActiveGraph 4.0. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really that's really cool. And you mentioned, um, one of the things you just, you just said a second ago was uh, machine learning. So mm -hmm. um, how do you think that you know AI and machine learning and things like this are, gonna, are going to affect your program? Um, very well, yeah. uh, because um, it will always be easier to click and drag a graph with words to iterate a model. Mm -hmm. It'll always be easier than to try to describe it with words. Yeah, so I can see the that. generative AI aspects are positive for us. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are already now generative AI programs that will build you a model based on certain data. Right. And that's what we need. We need more deterministic and dynamic modeling to be able to iterate it with our graphic interface yeah. and our scenario management software. And so the AI thing is gonna be great for us because you know, we are not threatened by it because grabbing a graph and saying, here's this trend line for 10 years, just to just the trend in this way, uh, whatever, just to describe that, same. For sure. And so five times before you could actually say it or type a, a yeah. text string that would do the same. For sure. And so, and so it's going to be great for us because the AI, the generative AI part that is generating more models more easily for people that can then be iterated mm -hmm. by an active graph interface is just going to be it's going to be more ubiquitous. So it's going to be great for us. Yeah. Um. I I, I was just sitting here uh, kind of daydreaming about the <laughs> about the idea of you know if you if if you're moving a graph around type of thing. Um, you know, you take multiple variables and you click and drag on, on these different th whatever, the variables yeah. or whatever, um, you know, you may be able to have some generative AI that comes out and, and gives you a, an inference based on that, based mm -hmm. on that data. So things are going to come full circle. Think about it. It's like, this is what this means, you know? Yes. Um, so it, it's interesting to think about how things are going to come full circle with that type of mm -hmm. stuff. And, um, and you we, know, we already do some, we already do uh, iterating machine learning and oh, stuff cool. like that. So, because of our Python capability now, mm -hmm. we can go right into models. Now, most of the time, you're not iterating machine learning as it is. You've used machine learning to deduce a model, and uh, whether it's a black box model or it's, or it's just a regular statistical model, you use that, and then that model is what is iterated for, for forecasting. Gotcha. But it's already kind of integrated into kind of our DNA now. Yeah. It's, it's kind of looking at that through Python. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's an interesting question for you. Um, so uh, when I was when I was an undergrad, I was very analytical, and so I, I always think about things very anal. I'm just very left brain in general. Like I'm, I'm very analytical. I mm -hmm. make decisions based on logic and and analysis of, of numbers. And I could like tell that. when so we were talking about watches. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, right, yeah, because I was talking about I was talking about the movements. You're that's like, what that's what fascinates. Yeah, just, <laughs> like, like like a robot. I'm like a robot. But um, so what what steps can you guys take? And it's kind of kind of a strange question, but um, I think about confirmation bias a mm -hmm. lot, right? Yeah. And so like. For our listeners, um, at least my the way I would interpret confirmation bias is to say I desire a certain outcome, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's take the mortgage for instance, right? So I desire a certain outcome. I desire you know this house or whatever. So I might yeah. move this graph around in we'll seek mentality that that I can afford this house. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can't afford it at all. So kind of like thing. the goal seek mentality. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, what types of things can you do to make sure that people aren't they're, they're ultimately making good decision, decisions mm -hmm. with the data, if that makes sense. So, yeah. like, like, what steps can you take with your software, with the analysis of, of the things you're able to provide, to make sure that people are, are ultimately making good decisions and not just not just making a decision because you know that's the outcome they want, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So, firstly, we have to maintain our humility. Active mm -hmm. Graph facilitates scenarios and running scenarios. We can layer onto models, but the models are the same models that you would otherwise build. Graph. But in fact, it can be layered onto like any existing model. Sure. You don't have to build it differently for yeah. active graph. But our software doesn't actually do the calculations. It iterates the calculations. Right. So I have a philosophical point of view on what you said, okay. but it's not really so much an active graph point of view mm -hmm. because what we do is any model that you bring that's a deterministic model or a dynamic model yeah. that has uh, explanatory or response variables, we can make it yeah. magic. Basically, we can we can make it kind of usable by anybody in sure. a graphic way, but um, but the confirmation yeah. bias uh, I think it is very real and it's already inherent in the model. That's why I said this yeah. whole long thing is like 
if you iterate whatever information bias, that will be built into your model. Yeah. So it doesn't really impact us. We'll yeah. iterate whatever model you build. It is a big problem, though. If you look at, yeah, um, just look at what happened with Google in their generative AI. Right? Mm -hmm. It was a debit card. Yeah, yeah. Um, if trash. you look at <laughs> it's trash. any of, so a model is only as good as how it was built or how it was trained, mm -hmm. and um, I do think that confirmation bias is broadly an issue. It's a societal issue as AI becomes more ubiquitous. For right? sure. Um, so remember that. I always tell this to people when people are less familiar with AI and what it is. I always say, just think of AI as an increased on similar hence pattern recognition system. Yeah. That can use those patterns to then forecast based on similar questions. Right. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. That's that it, that works for ninety nine point nine percent of applications of the word the words AI. Sure. Artificial intelligence. And if you think about it that way, and you just mentally replace AI with advanced pattern recognition. Mm -hmm you'll see that it doesn't really generate anything new. Generative AI just regurgitates things in the highest probability word. You know, it, the highest probability best next word is what it's generating right. based on what it's been fed. In other words, nothing new is ever going to be created from right. it, really. Right. It can look like it. Oh, yeah, do me a Salvador Dali painting, but it, in, you know, of a barn or whatever. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. yeah. Seems like it's generating something new, but it really isn't. Yeah. It's using the past. And so I think that, that that's a very, very big thing. So to the extent that the training data is biased in a certain direction, so will the AI be. And um, on the other hand, there is something to be said for getting to a destination and looking at an algorithm is I don't want to change the explanatory variables. I want a certain resultant variable mm -hmm. to be done. And we can do that with various graphic processes as well. Of course. So if you want to get that. So we can do, we don't do automatic, what they call breakback for all the, if there, or if there are any, you know, math geeks out there, breakback is essentially when you say, the, yeah. we don't, I want this result and change the variables in this dynamic. Yeah. To kind of work it backwards work. to make right. it fit. Yeah. We don't do that in an automated basis, but we can do that on a graphic basis. Yeah. 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 It's, I, I always, I always, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm acutely aware of confirmation bias, you know, because you know, I, I think that, um, well, self-awareness, whether it's awareness of yourself or your business or, or your endeavor, whatever that mm -hmm. happens to be, is, is critically important to yielding a true result, no matter good or bad, good yeah. or bad. And, and sometimes they're bad, you know. Um, but I was just sitting here thinking about, you know, for instance, being in a, being in a boardroom and we're, we're dragging the graph around type mm -hmm. of thing and, and fitting variables. And it's like, you know, we we may have to get what do to we want to see sitting in the banquet no right right exactly and so um you know one of your first examples was uh sitting in the banquet with, with i think you said um you know securities and, and things mm -hmm. like that and yeah and and essentially proving that you know with a visual example that this particular bank was a better option for the finances of the client or whatever yeah and i'm sitting here wondering and thinking about it and it's like it's like you know what if they weren't <laughs> like what yeah. if what if you're sitting in the in the in the boardroom or whatever and and you know another bank's offering just for simple simple purpose they're offering like a better apr or something like that and right and then and then you know all of a sudden the graph goes red or whatever and it's like oh yeah that's a that, very yeah. interesting point yeah but wouldn't you rather get to know that faster and prop later I, so i think so the, if the fact pattern is that you in fact your value prop is not as good yeah as somebody else's at least one you've differentiated yourself by being able to iterate it right. with your client to tailor it to them. But it's also a matter of speeding up that information. So yeah. you say, no, 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 I'm actually getting this price from the other guy. Well, nothing's going to save that uh, yeah. that kind of situation and fact pattern. And I think that the confirmation bias is also important that the other side of confirmation bias is, is really, in a way, empathy is the, other, sure. is the flip side of that coin. Mm -hmm. And what we always say is that we're an empathy generator. Why? Because if you start a meeting, helps marketing business. Reese, you have a fantastic marketing business, and I am a consultant that helps marketing businesses gain more, you right. know, attract new clients. And mm -hmm. I think that your business is going to grow by thirty percent. And yeah. uh, let me show you my deck, and I'll tell you how I do it. Right. That's kind of like okay, yeah, like every LinkedIn post in your yeah. inbox or whatever. You like, you know. I'm gonna, but I'm going to tell you a story off air. You're going right. to love it, by the way, because right. I had a very similar experience yesterday, and it was 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, tell you this somebody story with a song and dance. Oh, well, boy. you know, it's almost oh, comes off as cheesy used car salesman oh, boy. thing. But that's what people do because they have a deck. They need to get through the deck. Right. With Active Ref, you can say, Reese, mm -hmm. you know your market better than I do. Let's dial in the assumptions together. Here's my assumption dashboard. Let's dial them in. It's a, it's a show you what I do mm -hmm. based on your assumptions. Yeah. Totally different meeting. It's a pow it's a powerful meeting too. It's a it's a kind of a power play because then the next thing you know you're you're, um, I was just having a conversation with a good friend of mine. He, he's actually a business legend. Isaac Alexander is his name. But um, he uh, he has an um, IT services company. So he mm -hmm. does uh, uh, manage networks and, and cybersecurity and things like this. Right. And he, he was talking about his unique market proposition. He was talking about how um, you know their company, um, they want to be a full-service partner. And mm -hmm. and I think that's just a brilliant you know play for this industry is because yeah. – He's like, you know, what 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 happens if you're at your office and your uh, your Spectrum internet goes out, you know? And I was like, I'm calling Spectrum. And he's like, he's like, what if you and saying, hey, you're in a One IT firm shot. that that yeah. knows that that happened and is calling you and saying, hey, your internet's out. We're gonna get this fixed for you. Right. And I was like, that's a that's a different level of service, you know? And and that's that's the type of stuff that you're able to to forecast with softwares like yours because that's the type of stuff that you're able to say. You get into somebody's business, and so it's, you're not just you're giving them a day. Right. You know, you're absolutely you're saying, right. What is this? So that's so if you have cool. a little bit of a shift, or you, I don't know if you've read any of Alex Hormozzi's books or mm -hmm. anything. Like I have. That. So, so if you if you're shifting the value prop, mm -hmm. that's great. But now you're doing something. You're being a category creator in a certain sense because you're bundling services or goods in a different way than the market is used to consuming them. Right. Correct? Because that's kind of what one of our strongest use cases is yeah because articulating a value prop clearly is something you can do if you can make quick calculations with your client if, you're, sure. if you've got something static or even like a tableau or a power bi something that just shows certain slices of a previous really baked view right that doesn't lend itself but when you have a unique value prop and you want to articulate it with the specific references of the client's reality mm -hmm. that's when it comes down to and you can do it live, and you can do yeah. it live. It's yeah. not like it's not like, hey, give me this information. I'm going to calculate and get back to you next yeah. day or whatever. So, long story short, I want to talk to Isaac. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll introduce you. I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. That's awesome. It's, uh, it's um, a great idea. I will introduce you to Isaac after the show. Um, that's yeah, yeah. It's um, that's the power of business legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, we just, nice. You just. I don't it's know, a great thing you guys have going here. It's so impressive. Yeah. The studio. It's Thanks. Really, yeah. Really oh, cool it's stuff. uh, we've been through a couple iterations of the studio. Um, so. It's funny because the the production value, of course, is way better than it was when we first yeah. started. And we, uh, not that I ever know what I'm doing, really, but you know, uh, when we first started, I had no false idea. false modesty. Look at you. There you go. <laughs> but you know, it it's uh, it's grown a lot. The show's grown, and um, it's just it's cool because it, it helps me connect people, and, mm -hmm. and it's very uh, it's very, very powerful cool. thing. So That's awesome. Very good. That's good. Um, so we're running out of time here, mm -hmm. and I'm getting hungry. And we gotta do lunch, so uh, something right. like that. I'd like to sign off with um, with I don't know a thought provoking question or a fun question or All something right. like that. So I've been sitting here thinking about it. And this is usually where I stall for time, but I think I got a decent one for mm -hmm. you. So what do you think would be, and, and it may be something you've already done, so mm -hmm. that that that's an applicable answer too. But what do you think would be the coolest application of Active Graph, like the coolest thing coolest that 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 you could you know be able to calculate on the fly or, or um, you know, something that, that really proves a concept or anything like that? What, what do you think the coolest thing would be? So um, I think the coolest thing we've done so far is, what, so I, I'm a firm believer in, uh, okay. in my professional life, I've been involved in NGOs that, that focus on children. Okay. And um, one of the biggest crises facing America, and in fact, the world, is, uh, Child care. Yeah. And we can argue about why that is and whether farming out, you know, your kids, you know, whether, whether that's a good or bad thing is not the point. The point right. is there is a need for child care and there's a lack of child care. Okay, yeah. And uh, appropriate child care. And um, one of the things we did with Active Graph is we built a model um, for a certain state that I will not mention, but we do a lot of the analytics for the child care analytics of a state in, 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 in what we did was we built and um, as part of our consulting business and what uh, we did was we built a model that allows anybody to look at what the cost of child care is if there's more investment 
in a region. For instance, somebody wants to bring a new tech campus to that region. Or remember back when Amazon was looking for Amazon headquarters too or whatever. Right, yeah. We built a model that allows you with the specific data of that state to say which county could you put that in and have adequate ch adequate childcare, or if you don't, because more workers mean more kids means more childcare, and sometimes right. the economy is constrained because you can't get the workers because work on and they can't get childcare, right? right? So it's a vicious circle. So that was such a cool thing to work on and actually have built a yeah. model that allows. It's like um, a really complicated to model too. It is. It's a, it's basically five models into one. Yeah, and it looks up live. What are the capacities in the given region where they're looking to attract the workers? Yeah. And it says, in what part were, will industry, government, or anybody else pay for the incremental child care needed, and how much is it likely to cost? Yeah. It's a really cool model. That is really cool. You know? That's and neat. So it allows people to think very quickly about, about, okay, what would be the implications for the child care capacities in this particular couple of zip codes? Right. And how much bring in terms, how much of that would the government bear? And how much does that additional economic activity bring in terms of GDP and tax revenue? It calculates yeah. that as well. So it's like a full 360 view. That's so cool. So it's, it's, it's not, it, yeah, I, I, I just like the application of it. For, yeah. Because for, kids are our future, right? If yeah, we're not sure. raising them right and we're teaching them crazy stuff and, you know, stuff like that, that's not good. So, right, in, but if we have good childcare and make sure that they're prepared for kindergarten, yeah, and they're K ready, as they say, it's a great application of analytics, isn't it? Right? Yeah, that's, so that that's kind of my my favorite. That's like one. a that that is super cool because it's like, it's like you're able to, to factor in all these different uh, relevant things that are that are causal to whether or not yes. this this ultimately like area would be a good fit for this for this thing, and 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 ultimately like. The implication is childcare, so that's really yeah. cool. That's really yeah. cool that you're able to take like, well, like you said, five models and, and narrow it down to these. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you, between then and then, you probably get some really good information in between. Like this area might be good, or that area might be good. Exactly. Have, have and then you can say yeah. Yeah, it's better this way, or it costs us this way, or you know, that's that cool. Kind of stuff. Yeah. That's cool. I'd love to see that if if yeah. you can show me. But you know, I get it if you can't. But I was going to say I'd love to see that model at some point. But um, well, uh, Mr. Laszlo, it's it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, man. Thanks a lot, Reese. Um, it's been great being here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go have lunch, man. All let's right. Do it. Thank you.